Good morning, DMSF Med students. Our topic for today is about Trypanosoma cruzi. This vector-borne parasite is common in the Latin, Central, and South America, causing America trypanosomiasis or Chagas disease. The infective stage to human is metacyclic trypomastigote. The diagnostic stages are trypomastigote in the blood smear and amastigote in tissue biopsy. We will discuss these stages later. This parasite undergo multiplication by binary fission as a mastigote in human and longitudinal fission as epimastigote in the vector. The reserva hosts of Trypanosoma cruzi are domestic animals, armadillo, raccoons, and other animals. Infection is generally intracellular, commonly affecting the cardiomyocytes and cells of the reticuloendothelial system. Other tissues affected are esophagus, intestinal mucosa, among others. This is the triatomine or ridovid or kissing bug. It is also called kissing bug because it tends to bite the face of the host. It is dark brown to black with small tan edge around its abdominal region. Wings are held flat over the back at rest and its beak extends backward below the body. This picture shows to you the different genera of vectors of Trypanosoma cruzi, namely Triatoma, Panstrongylus, and Rhodneus. In the life cycle of Trypanosoma cruzi, there are only three forms, a mastigote and tripomastigote, which are found in humans, and epimastigote, which is found in the vector. Let us discuss these forms one by one. A mastigote is round or ovoid in shape, occurring in small groups of intracellular cyst-like collections in tissue like the myocardium or macrophages among other tissues. This stage is known to be the replicating form in the human host. There is no exterior flagellum and undulating membrane, so the movement of this parasite is just rotation. Tripomastigote of Trypanosoma cruzi has unique C or S or U shape with undulating membrane that is narrow with 2 to 3 undulations. Trypomastigote is motile but doesn't have replicative capability. It is the infective stage to both the vector and the human host. The vector carries metacyclic trypomastigote which is the infective stage to humans. On the other hand, human host carries blood trypomastigote which is the infective stage to the vector. It is a little confusing but you will understand it better later when I will show to you the life cycle. The last form that we need to discuss is epimastigote which is present in the mid-gut of the vector. It is motile with intense replicative activity by longitudinal binary fission. The forms of Trypanosoma cruzi are amastigote, tripomastigote, and epimastigote. This is the life cycle of Trypanosoma cruzi according to the CDC. The life cycle of Trypanosoma cruzi begins when the triatomine ridovid bug bites the human host while defecating with metacyclic tripomastigote in the feces. This infective stage to human, the metacyclic tripomastigote coming from the feces, enters the bite wound or mucosal membrane like the conjunctiva. This metacyclic tripomastigote enters the circulation but does not multiply. It can either be ingested by macrophages or infect cells like the myocardium. Intracellularly, metacyclic tripomastigote transforms to become the non motile amastigote and undergoes replication by binary fission. After some time, these amastigotes transform to become tripomastigotes and released extracellularly to the blood circulation. These blood tripomastigotes have two fates. One, it might infect another cell and transform to become a mastigote intracellularly and multiplies and repeats the cycle again and again. Or two, it might be ingested by insect vector during biting. Hence, the blood tripomastigote is the infective stage to the insect vector. Once the blood tripomastigote is ingested by the triatomine bug, it passes through the posterior portion of the mid-gut where it transforms to become epimastigote. Epimastigote multiplies at the mid-gut through longitudinal binary fission. These epimastigotes transform to become metacyclic tripomastigote once it is at the hindgut. Infective metacyclic tripomastigote stays at the rectum until it is passed with the feces. These metacyclic tripomastigotes gain entry to the human host as discussed earlier, and the cycle continues. So in this life cycle, 
metacyclic trypomastigote is the infective stage to humans. Blood trypomastigote is the infective stage to the vector. And amastigote and trypomastigote are the diagnostic stages found in tissue biopsy and blood smear respectively. This picture shows to you how the triatomin bug bites and defecates and how Trypanosoma cruzi gains entry to the human host. During the acute phase, most of the cases are undetected and undiagnosed. Nevertheless, if there are manifestations, it might be focal or diffuse inflammation, mainly affecting the skin and myocardium with non-specific symptoms like the following. Cutaneous manifestations are usually seen at the site of inoculation. Chagoma is a foronchal-like lesions associated with induration, central edema, and regional lymphadenopathy that appears at the site of entry of parasite. Romania signs is the swelling of the eyelid if the parasite penetrates the conjunctiva. It is described as unilateral, painless, bipalpebral edema with conjunctivitis with or without involvement of the lacrimal gland and lymphadenopathy, and usually resolves after one to two months. On the other hand, in the chronic phase, the heart is the primary organ affected. During chronic phase, there is fibrotic reactions to the parasite. If it is in the heart, fibrotic changes causes injury to the myocardium or the cardiac conducting system causing ECG abnormality like complete heart block cardiomyopathy or even resulting to left ventricular apical aneurysm. If it is in the GIT, it affects the enteric nervous system and consequently causing megacolon and or achalasia. The diagnosis of Chagas disease in the acute phase is by complete history with emphasis on exposure to insect vector, travel history, place of residence and work, and probably recent blood transfusion in the endemic area. Definitive diagnosis during the acute phase relies on the direct visualization of the parasite in the thick and thin blood smear using gem sustain. Also, tissue biopsy like the heart, CSF, or lymph can also be examined. Other tests that might be performed are first, microhematocrit concentration method, especially if the parasitic burden is low. Another test is xenodiagnosis, which is not commonly done nowadays, wherein laboratory-grown triatomine bugs are allowed to feed on suspected patients, and after one month, the bug is dissected and examined for the presence of the parasites in the gut. During the chronic phase of infection, WHO recommends that at least two of the following tests should be positive before a diagnosis of Chagas disease is made, namely ELISA, indirect hemagglutination, PCR, and indirect immunofluorescence. Other ancillary tests are ECG and 2D echo to document heart block and cardiomyopathy with or without apical aneurysm, respectively. We can also do barium esophagogram to document achalasia or barium enema to check for megacolon. In the acute phase, we can give nifortimox or benznidazole to the patient. Allopurinol and itraconazole may also be given to halt the progression of cardiomyopathy. In the chronic phase, we address the complications of Chagas disease like offering pacemaker and or antiarrhythmic drugs if the heart is involved. Or we may give laxatives or surgical intervention in megacolon or achalasia. For prevention and control, we may offer vector control and strict blood transfusion regulations especially in endemic areas. And that is the end of our lecture.